Hello, and welcome to the CATIA Finite Element Analysis Solution Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you the different options CATIA has for the Finite Element Analysis Solutions, and also compare those to a closed form of this same solution. So let's revisit our original problem statement from the last video. We have a steel beam with 120 pounds per foot uniform load applied to the top surface. It is 1 inch wide, 2 inches tall, and 8 feet long. Here's the solution in closed form for this particular setup. My solution says that there is a deflection of 0.55 inches. Let's see if we can reproduce this inside CATIA. So we go back to our part that we already set up inside CATIA. So here's our beam with the appropriate restraints, forces, and mesh applied to it. Now we can go ahead and calculate the results. To do that, we select the Calculate button, and we want it to compute all the calculations. We select OK. Now CATIA tells us how much processing power we need to actually analyze this. This looks OK, so hit Yes. And now our analysis is done. So nothing has changed, but these buttons are no longer grayed out. So let's select the first one. This is the von Meiss stress state. Notice that it changed colors, but it's not really easy to look at. So to change that, we change the display option to show material. And now we can see a colorful illustration of the stresses on this part. Now notice this deflection looks a little extreme. To change that, we go to the amplification magnitude button and now you can see that this has been set to a factor of 4. We can move this slider around to give the appropriate factor and for demonstration purposes we'll set it to about 6. Hit OK. If we select the animate button down here we can see the force being applied to the part. We can change the speed and see how the elements change as the load is being applied. We can zoom in and see things change colors. Let's close out of that and now let's actually see the stress elements involved in this part. So hit the drop down menu and we want to select principal stresses. So now we can see the individual stress elements that make up this part. So let's zoom in on these and we can see all these stress elements. If you hover over it'll tell you what the stress is on that individual element. Here you can see that this element has a 12,100 psi stress in the x direction, 444 psi in the y direction, and 852 psi in the z direction. We can also see the maximum stresses in this display over here. Now let's check the deflection of this part. Hit the drop down and select displacement. And now we can see that this part is now made up of arrows. And this is how much deflection there is in the part. So according to this, the maximum displacement is 0.467 inches. We can also find the location of the maximum deflection by selecting the maximum and minimum button. And hit OK. And now we can see where the maximum displacement occurs. So let's zoom in on that part. And we see the maximum deflection is on the back side and its deflection is 0.467 inches. If we switch back to the closed form solution, we see that is quite different from our solution. There are several different reasons for this difference. One of them is our element size is still fairly large. If we were to reduce that element size, our solution would be more accurate. Another possibility is that we have non-ideal ending conditions. So these ending conditions are not exactly what is modeled by that closed form solution. Another possibility is that our force is applied on a surface and not directly over the centroid as the solution assumes. 
So what would happen if we did change the element size? I ran the same part with the different element size earlier. We'll open the smaller element size. And as you can see here, our element is considerably smaller. Our element is 0.1 inches as opposed to 0.5 inches. So let's see how much difference that makes. So I'll select the displacement. And now if we hit the maximum and minimum, now our displacement is 0.545, which is much closer to our closed form solution. This demonstrates the effects of element size on your part. Another important thing to note is when you increase element size, you substantially increase the time needed to process. For instance, the original analysis took less than a second to run. With the reduced element size, the analysis took more than half an hour to run. The file size also increased considerably. This analysis with a small element is more than a gig of data. This means that if you want your solution to have very little error, you will have to have a very powerful computer and a lot of time on your hands. With that, we conclude the finite element analysis solution tutorial.